you mount these on a bit of an angle. And the reason you do that is because it... Hey guys, Brad here, and welcome to our tiny home. This is something we've been building for a while, and uh, it's coming along nicely, I think. We're, we're just about ready to start doing the finishing, which is sort of finish off all the, the wiring. But this video is about this Chinese diesel heater. These things are becoming quite popular on Amazon, and I picked one up a year ago, and we finally got it installed. And I'm going to just kind of tell you the pros and cons about these things that I've come across so far. We'll run it and uh, just take a little bit of a quick first impression look. So before I get to it though, make sure you subscribe, hit that notify bell, give us a thumbs up, and definitely leave us some comments down below because, you know, I love talking with you guys. So this is the five kilowatt unit. I think it cost me about 200 bucks Canadian and it is a diesel heater. I'm not totally certain if I can run kerosene on this yet. I haven't checked into that, but I know it's something that people are asking me about. Very, very easy to set up. We will be doing a YouTube video on how to set this thing up, but um, there's a lot of videos out there as well and different tips and tricks. And so I'll try and cover that in the videos to come. But this first impressions, um, you know, when I think when I bought this, I was expecting to have, you know, a nice little heater and it would heat our space and it would be nice and silent because all the videos I've watched, you know, over a year ago, they, they seem to be quite quiet. But what they don't tell you is there's a really annoying ticking noise. And that's coming from the fuel pump. So the fuel pump is right here. And I'm going to turn this unit on right now just so it can sort of warm up. And the way you do that, and I'll do a whole video on this remote control, but the way you do that is you just press the power button and it turns on. Now it's gonna try and heat up for a bit before it starts pumping air out of this unit and before we start hearing this ticking noise. But essentially, you mount these on a bit of an angle and the reason you do that is because it uses the diesel fuel to lubricate the little sort of piston that's in here that's moving back and forth. And if you, so if you mount that level, you don't get enough fuel over the mechanism to keep it lubricated and you can burn it out. I am looking for a quieter fuel pump, maybe something that's not on Amazon, I don't know. I'm doing a bunch of research to try and find something, but this makes a really annoying ticking noise. And the higher you turn the temperature up on these units, the louder this ticking noise gets. Another option I'm thinking about doing is mounting this, this uh, fuel pump on the outside because I do have my fuel tank on the outside as well. And I'm gonna tell you why I did that later in this video. But uh, I was thinking, taking this and bolting it to the underside of the trail or maybe putting in a little plate just to protect it from, you know, rocks and, and weather and stuff flicking up from the tires. There we go. There's the ticking. I don't know if you can hear that. I'll put my mic right by it. So there's that ticking noise and it's, it's fine in the daytime, but I think if you're trying to sleep and you've got heat running, I think it would become very, it very annoying. Fine. Oh, Tiffany says it's not fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if we're in here reading a book or something, it's going to be super annoying. So we are going to have a little electric fireplace sitting above this. I'm going to build a hearth and we'll have electric fireplace sitting here that will, you know, be sort of um, nice to run during the day. And if we need a real good blast of of heat in the colder months, then we could use the heater itself. So, you know, we got two options and because we're plugged into shore power, we've got, we've got these options. But I, we did try this electric fireplace during the winter time and it was just a little bit, you know, not good enough, I should say, to, to heat this whole entire trailer. So having this diesel heater is the key. Now in saying that, it's definitely a great heater for pumping out heat. 
this thing pumps heat like crazy. So don't worry about that. These things are gonna heat up a large space. It's very, very impressive. And the overall build quality of these is really impressive. This is the fuel filter right here. So it's coming off the fuel tank, which is right here, runs through the filter. Then this line just curls and goes down up into the fuel pump. Then the fuel pump goes down through the floor and back up into the bottom side of this unit. So now it's ramping up. You can probably hear sort of the ticking here. And, and we've got a lot of heat coming out. So I don't know if you can hear that, but it's kind of loud. I mean, you can easily talk over it, but it's kind of loud. So I'm just gonna turn it off. And by doing that, you just hold down the off button. Just hold that down. And then it's going to, you probably can't see it in this light. It cycles down and it'll run cold air over the, the actual motor on the outside to help cool it down. And that's one tip. I, I was planning on putting just an on off switch on this. Now I still might do it, but I'll mount it on the inside of the cabinet. So basically when I'm not in the trailer, I can just turn the whole unit off sort of prolonging the life of the screen because the screen doesn't turn off as far as you know what you can see there there's some digital readouts so if you have a kill switch on this basically an on off switch and you just flick it off while this thing is running you probably will destroy it because these things are are heaters basically they're an indirect heater and if you don't cool them down properly and they don't go through their cycles then they will burn out and and be destroyed this is very similar to uh, big frost fighters that we use in construction it it heats up in the inside and you're blowing fresh air around the unit itself and using that air to to uh, heat your space and it's totally safe you can breathe it and you don't have to worry about fumes now, one thing I did a little bit sort of, it, not wrong, but it just took me a little bit longer. And that's the mounting plate on this unit. When you're installing these, use the mounting plate to sort of figure out where you want your hole and trace it and all that. But then actually mount your plate to the bottom of your heater and then mount all your hoses like your fresh air intake, your exhaust and your fuel line and then put that on. I did it a little bit differently. I mounted the plate on the floor and then I mounted the heater and I had to crawl underneath the trailer and start putting it all together that way. And then I just realized that, uh, you know, I was taking way too long and I could have just mounted it all up and above on a table. And then, you know, it'd be a lot easier to just put back in. So the one last thing I wanted to mention was the fuel tank. The reason I put it on the outside was because I don't want to come inside and pour diesel fuel in my trailer. Diesel fuel is really, really smelly. And if you spill even the smallest little drop in your cabinet, then you're just not going to be able to get rid of that. It's just going to stink. I've been pouring diesel fuel in tools for a long time and I know Tiffany hates it when I get it on my hands because it's just it's on there for like 24 hours straight so and that's washing and stuff so just a little tip if you can mount the fuel tank on the outside of your car your trailer your truck it's probably a good idea to do that because not only is it easier to fill up when you go to a gas station um, it's just less chance of spilling diesel fuel in your living quarters. So overall, I'm really happy with this unit, except for the ticking noise. I'm really happy with the heat output. And in the videos to come, we're gonna get into sort of more of an install and um, how, how to kind of put this all together and then a, a controller video. So guys, I hope you liked the video and lots more coming down the pipe. Make sure you subscribe, hit that notify bell. Give me a thumbs up. 
Till next time, keep on crushing it. We'll catch you later.